Hello again and welcome to the 11th part of this 12th MOOC dedicated to the production of sustainable biofuels, namely biojet and biodiesel. In the part 10, we talked about the cooling section of the reactor effluent. Let's now have a look at the rest of the process. Remember, the gas phase was separated from the liquid phase in a drum operating at 35 bars and a temperature of 40 degrees C. The 36 tons per hour of gas contained about 70 mol percent of hydrogen, 15 mol percent of propane and especially 2 mol percent of CO2. This CO2 must somehow leave the reaction section, otherwise it will accumulate. This is why we use a amine solution that will absorb the CO2. With a DEA or MDEA amine solution, we will be able to capture about 90% of the CO2 and therefore have a washed gas with a hydrogen concentration of 72 mol percent. This gas is then recycled with a recycled gas compressor at the inlet of the unit. And remember, it is this gas that was injected at the very beginning of the process. This gas ensures the stability of the catalyst and makes sure that we always are in excess of hydrogen. Let's now come back to the two hydrocarbon streams leaving the separators. The 290 tons per hour liquid leaving the hot drum and the 3 tons per hour from the cold drum enter a column called a stripper to remove the propane and the traces of H2S. In this column, steam is typically injected at the bottoms, here typically 2.5 tons per hour. This column typically operates at 4 bars and is equipped with a condenser and a reflux drum. At the top, the condenser removes about 2 gigacalories per hour and will recover about 5 tons per hour of gas, which is mainly propane. We also have sour water, which results from the stripping steam that has condensed. We typically recover here 3 tons per hour of sour water. The bottom's product, free of CO2, C3 and H2S, is then cooled down in a heat exchanger to reach 150 degrees C, and is then routed to a dryer to remove traces of water, which can interfere with the operation of the downstream section. We remove here about 12 gigacalories per hour of energy, which is more than enough to produce steam. The bottom's product, once dried, is partly recirculated to the reaction section and constitute the famous 200 tons per hour of inert liquid that had been injected at the very beginning of the process. About 86 tons per hour of remaining liquid, consisting mainly in paraffins, are routed to a tank before being treated in the downstream section. For memory, the cloud point is the temperature at which a fuel becomes cloudy often due to the presence of long and rather linear paraffins. Because of the structure of these paraffins, it is not surprising that the cloud point of the liquid effluent of this unit is rather high. It is here recalled that the regulation in Europe aims at a plus 5 degrees C or minus 5 degrees C cloud point, compared to the cloud point of our liquid effluent of 20 degrees C, and this depends very logically on the feed treated. Well, that's it for today. See you very soon in the next part. In the meantime, do not hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel and answer the five questions of the quiz. See you very soon. Bye-bye.